5254 imagine As we mark the World Press Freedom Day, journalists in Kenya continue to live in fear of assassination and threats coming from both state and non-state actors in their line of duty. This year alone, two journalists have been assassinated in a span of a month. The gruesome murder of Jennifer Mumbua, a former Kenya News Agency Bureau Chief and Betty Barasa, a senior video editor and television producer working for the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, paints a grim picture of the state of journalism in Kenya. Our work as human rights defenders are basically considered journalists as human rights defenders also. So in one way or another in our work we interact with journalists and we have had cases whereby they report threats, intimidation, by virtue of their work. So we normally try to help uh, come for their solidarity, report their cases, and then basically be there for them. Uh, so our work basically we have touched on issues of threats facing journalists, but then again in our country also we have seen uh, a number of journalists have been actually killed in the line of work. Maybe they report issues of corruption, uh, in that case uh, they, they are killed in the line of duty. Last year, on the World Press of Freedom Day, a group of gangs were laid and killed Mohamed Marjan, who worked for Pamoja FM, was stabbed to death at 5 a.m. while headed to work in the morning. Mwenyewe hatuwezi kusema kwamba ni mtu ambaye ana ugomvi pengine, ambao unaweza kusema kwamba pengine alikuwa amegombana na mtu, hafanyi kile kipindi ambacho tunaweza kusema kwamba pengine kinatatua matatizo mambo tata ambayo pengine aligusa mtu fulani katika kusema kwake hapana. My name is Jess Kimani, I'm the regional coordinator for the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. We are a think tank of experts uh, drawn from uh, the academia journalism, uh, human rights defenders, diplomats, and our work is basically to fight the illegal crime markets through coming up with the counter market strategies. Uh, so we do this through analyzing the trends in the illicit markets and um, part of our product is what we call the assassination witness where we document and uh, talk about the people who have either disappeared without a trace or they've been assassinated by state agents. Uh, of concern is Kenya, where we've seen a lot of killings of journalists, uh, which uh, are mostly state perpetrated, where we have um, examples of people like um, Kitui, who was murdered as he was doing an investigation about a murder linked to uh, the ICC cases. And we also have people like Monohe, who also was found dead in his house. Uh, the main concern is the increasing in numbers instead of reducing. Uh, this year alone we witnessed two murders of journalists, uh, one who was supposed to be a state witness, uh, Miss Jennifer, and she was due to appear in court uh, and talk about uh, a corruption scandal linked to the National Land Commission, linked to key politicians in, in, the, in the former government. Why this is worrying is because we feel like uh, it has forced um, so many people to shrink. It has forced a lot of journalists to either abandon their duties. The 2021 World Press of Freedom Index ranks Kenya 102nd out of 180 with a score of 33.65 in press freedom. The position marks a drop of six spots compared to the country's previous ranking in 2018. This is especially a worrying trend with the backlashes from even the highest office in the country, rubbishing of the media. All is not lost, however. The move has led to the entrance of new form of media and penetration of affordable internet has given rise to robust digital media platforms. We talked to the founder of Nakuru TV, an online TV station based in Nakuru, and this is what he had to say. Remember, in, sometime in 2017, the head of state saying that newspaper are just for wrapping meat. You see that that is in a way attack on journalism as a profession. Acha mimi ni seme ukweli wangu wale wanaandika si wako hapa. Kwaani unafikiri si ni mimi na mimi ndiyo nasoma au nyinyi hamusomi hiyo gazeti. 
With the general elections are set for 2022 and a ranging pandemic, media stakeholders have already started experiencing threats and harassment by state and non-state actors, especially in the counties. Yet the shrinking media space has forced many journalists and media houses into self-censorship in fear of the state. You also see some kind of attempts to interfere with what we are doing, especially in the manner, especially when one, uh, any actor within that space is doing something that um, uh, the authorities or uh, the powers that be are not, ha are not happy with. And we have seen uh, certain attacks uh, directed to players within the digital spaces. Uh, with respect to journalists, uh, in the last, we would say, uh, two years, we've had a journalist, uh, just recently we had a journalist who was attacked by the police on his way home during um, the corona uh, period, uh, you want to say past a few hours. And um, we just made a conclusion that it's merely a misunderstanding of uh, of, of how the police should execute the orders that were given by the president on uh, matters of, of the curfew hours. National ID card in the Potia. Casa do Nagi is a pamper. He went away a pamper. She's come on a habari. See, they come on a habari. Nipua Muhalifu. The relationship between the media and the government hasn't been of help. With the corona restrictions and the heightened political instability, media organizations have come under attack from the government with threats, summons, and even physical attacks. For instance, the most recent case a few weeks to the World Press Freedom Day on April 25, 2021. Seven journalists were arrested and beaten by the police officers while covering the Tana Adi River Development Authority demolitions in Bere Embu. Who are you? <laughs> Another incident showing the unprofessionalism of Kenya Police Service on December 2020. Simon Ben from the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation KBC based in Nakuru was ill-treated and harassed by police officers. Simon was filming a scaffold between a motorist and traffic police officers. When the police attacked the motorist and soon they turned their wrath on Simon, who was recording the ordeal. My name is Caroline Chebet. I'm an environmental investigative reporter based in Nakuru, Kenya. I have been working on investigative stories for almost, I think this is my third year doing investigative work. The challenges mostly include threats while doing these investigative stories. It is usually not very easy to tell stories that, uh, that incorporate crime in it, illicit flow of resources or money. There are usually people who are out there trying to Try, trying to to come in between and uh, because they always there is always that fear of exposure so mostly they try to threaten journalists mostly these journalists face threats from messages they call they call people at they can warn you via text messages they can warn you via through calls but uh, I, they usually don't reveal their contacts. You just get a, a text that you are not supposed to. Don't, kindly don't continue venturing into that report. As much as uh, it takes a lot of courage to venture into investigative journalism, at some point you really feel like no story is worth your life. 
much as there is so much we really have to tell. But then there is so much threats these journalists are facing. Um, I'm called Joseph Omonde. I'm the executive director of an NGO called Midrift Human Rights Network. Registered as Midrift Hurinet, based here in Nakuru. But we work in Nairobi, Nakuru, Baringo, Kisumu, and Uganda. What I've observed is that um, one, since the promulgation of the constitution, I see there's a lot of robustness in the media. But we are also seeing a situation whereby the state actors are still clawing back on some of the gains that we got in the constitution. And um, in my observation is that um, still the state actors are not ready to share information that um, to the media so that the media can relate to the larger population because of their mandate. The other thing that I've observed is that uh, <clears throat> this is still resistance in terms of um, state agencies embracing um, the spirit of access to information because the media should be given the information so that, uh, as I've said, to relate to the bigger, uh, larger, larger population because that promotes also the good governance that is captured in Article 3, Article 10 of the Constitution about principles of governance uh, and national values. So there's still some resistance from some quarters not to give the media the leeway and the freedom and the platform to work the way it was envisioned in the Constitution. We, uh, we want to be the front liners when it comes to fighting for the rights of, of artists. Journalists, they risk a lot when they go out there too either from the threats, um, the intimidation, and sometimes you, you, you can even find that they will be dead because we've seen, I, I don't think it's a new phenomenon. In Kenya we've seen journalists being killed. It's not, it's an open secret. So Some of them it's probably because of the story they have done. Some are threatened and it's unfortunate that some some ended, and I don't know. In this country, the the, the cases they take so much time that you don't get to the conclusion of the matter as who really killed that journalist, or who, or or for what reason they did that, and this makes makes it very, very wrong because. The family, the country, everybody deserves an answer to know why a journalist had to lose their life just because of of relaying maybe information to the public and it costed them their life. It's such it's unfortunate. Wednesday is second December twenty twenty Angue FM, a radio station in Voye was attacked by police officers. A clear act of intimidation by the police for the journalist covering a student's riots that was taking place hours after they interviewed the students. According to the Media Council of Kenya, they have on several occasions brought to the attention of the Police Inspector General, Mr. Hilary Muchambai, the many pending cases of attacks against journalists reported in several police stations across the country whose investigations have either stalled or have never taken off. The prosecution of a suspected murder of a journalist in Kenya remain wanting. Francis Nyaraya and Kitui cases are unresolved, which add to the shocking UNESCO statistics, which states that only one out of ten cases are resolved. A documented case is one of the suspects linked to the murder of CIA journalist Eric Olo, a star newspaper journalist who was sentenced to 35 years in jail after he was found guilty in April 2021. Media freedom is a constitutional right provided for under Article 34 of the 2010 Constitution and should be protected by all, led by law enforcement agencies whom recently were aggrieved by an expose aired by Citizen TV. 
The editorial leadership of Royal Media Services was issued with summons by the Director of Criminal Investigations, George Kinoti, over the expose dated 18th April 2021 with the title Silaha Mitani and Guns Galore, broadcast on Citizen TV. Summoning journalists about their work or coercing them to reveal their sources is a clear violation of press freedom and the Constitution. The role of civil society remains paramount in ensuring that the number of journalists killed or disappeared without a trace is eliminated. Whereas great strides have been made to ensure that journalists operate freely and fairly, much more needs to be done. With all said and done, what remains cardinal and the Kralion call is the words of Walter Cronkite who said freedom of the press is not just important to democracy, it is democracy.